guys so today I'm gonna be showing you how to paint your very own cherry blossoms so these are the items you're gonna need so this is a white piece of paper it measures six by eight inches um, you can really make it whatever size you want but I have some optional extra steps to turn your painting into a scroll later so if you would like to do that I might make sure that you have something that's at least similar to this size so that you can um, do the rest of the steps that are optional at the end. I also have a q-tip, a paintbrush, some black paint. I'm actually going to put some water in here and water it down. And then I have some red paint and some white paint. You don't really need a whole lot of red and white paint. I actually got way more than I needed so you really only need a little bit of red and white paint and I'm using tempera paints. You guys can also use acrylic. Hello everyone and welcome to art class. I am Miss Hitchcock or you can call me Miss H and today we are going to be learning about Japanese cherry blossoms and about how important they are in Japan. So something fun about these trees is that even though they are called Japanese cherry blossoms, they actually grow in lots of different places outside of Japan too, including America where we live. Have you ever seen a Japanese cherry blossom before? Let's look at this picture. What do you see? Pause this video and talk about it and then come back and I'll tell you what I see. Well, when I look at this picture, I see a bunch of Japanese cherry blossoms in maybe a park. I see a bench. I see some people over here. Um, did you notice all of these beautiful cherry blossoms that are all over the ground, all these beautiful pink blossoms? Something else fun about Japanese cherry blossoms is that they only bloom for two weeks every spring, right at the beginning of April. And then after that two weeks, they begin to lose all of their beautiful blossoms and they all fall off of the trees and onto the ground, just like we see in this picture with these trees. Now let's go on a little visit to Japan for a moment. You guys know what this star is? This star is actually in America and this star is about where Indiana is. So that's where we live. So in order to get to Japan, we would have to go all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, all the way across Europe, and across much of Asia, and we could finally get over to Japan, this little red shape over here. So now that we are visiting in Japan, let's learn about a festival called Hanami that they have to celebrate the blooming of the Japanese cherry blossoms. Do you know what a festival is? Have you ever been to a fair or a picnic? This celebration is sort of similar, except at this picnic, they would be spending time enjoying the beautiful cherry blossoms. So let's watch this video and learn a little bit more about Hanami. Konnichiwa! Hanami is the Japanese tradition of viewing cherry blossoms. The custom is centuries old, dating back to the early 1700s. Flowering cherry blossoms are called sakura and usually peak at the start of April. They only hold their blushing blooms for a couple of weeks, and as a result, these blossoms symbolize renewal and the fleeting nature of life. To celebrate and honor the sakura, the Japanese hold hanami parties, gathering for picnics under the blooming trees from morning through night. If you have the opportunity to visit Japan during this period, you'll witness thousands of people gather in parks, socializing over sake, tea, and bento boxes full of edible treats. Partake by packing your own snacks and finding an unclaimed spot to admire this precious phenomenon. Okay, so in this video, we learned about Hanami, the picnic festival that the Japanese have to celebrate the blooming of the cherry blossoms. Did you hear the Japanese word for cherry blossoms? It was sakura. The video said that the sakura, or cherry blossoms, bloom for two weeks at the start of April in the spring. They gather together under the trees and have tea and snacks. They also said in the video that the Japanese cherry blossoms are very important to Japan and symbolize how fast things change. 
and they are beautiful to look at, of course. Now let's talk about Japanese scrolls. Do you know what a scroll is? A scroll is a piece of paper that has a string to hang from the top and a weight all the way down at the bottom. See this black weight underneath this paper? Why do you think the scroll needs a weight on it? Well, a scroll can also be rolled up like this. So you have to put that weight on it for when you hang it up so that it doesn't curl upwards while it's hanging. Why do you think the Japanese use scrolls? What would they put on them? Yeah, maybe they might use scrolls to write messages or words like we see in these ones over here, or maybe they would use them for decoration and hang them on the wall and just have little pictures or images on them, like in this one. So what do we see on this scroll? That's a Japanese cherry blossom, right? All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys how to begin your Japanese cherry blossom trees. So I have here my watered down black paint and my paintbrush, and this is what I'm going to start with. Before we get started, I want you guys, I want to give you guys a little bit of a tip. So um, when I'm painting with my paintbrush, I want to only paint with the tippy toes of my paintbrush. This means that I am just going to press down very lightly and make light lines with my paintbrush. And I'm not going to make really thick lines and paint with the full of my paintbrush. I'm only going to paint with the very tippy toes, just the end, okay? This is going to give you a thinner line, um, and then you can go in and you can press a bit further down to make a bit of a thicker line if you decide that that's what you want later on, but you can't make a thicker line thinner after it's already been thick. So paint with just the tippy toes of your brush. Another tip that I have is to use another piece of paper, some newspaper, um, something just to cover up the table so that you don't end up getting paint on the table. That's what I've got down here. That's what this is. That's just to protect my surface from getting paint on it. So now I am ready to start my Japanese cherry blossom tree. So what I want you to do, I want you to point your finger to the top of your page right in the middle. And then I want you to move your finger down just a little bit, probably a couple finger width down, keeping in the center of your paper. And if you know how to draw the letter Y, then you already are a step ahead on how we are going to draw our tree. So I am actually going to start just with a line right where my finger is. I'm going to go down to about the middle of my paper. Flip my paper upside down. This is actually the bottom of my tree where the ground would be. And here is where that Y shape comes in. So I am going to start here at the end of the line and go up towards this corner, but I'm not going to go all the way up. I'm just going to go a little bit down from the corner because I don't want it to go all the way up. Do you kind of see that Y shape so far? We're going to make another line starting back at this center point, going up towards the corner, but not quite to the corner. Now we have a big Y shape and believe it or not, we've already got the base for our tree here. So I am going to go in and add some branches. So dip back into your watered down black paint and we're just going to keep drawing Y's. So I am going to draw another Y maybe coming off of this branch somewhere. So I'm going to draw my line and then my two sticks for my Y. So I'm going to keep drawing some of these. You can paint them on wherever you like them. So I might put one over here. I might put one up here. And I'm just going to paint these on until I've decided that I'm happy with the way that my tree looks. But I'm going to keep all of my little Y's up on these two big top branches of my big Y 
because this part down here is going to be the trunk of my tree and there's not a whole lot of branches down there on the trunk of a tree. So I'm going to put another little bit bigger one here and maybe one over here. Something else you can do is you can actually go even further and paint even more Ys on top of the little Ys that you've put on your big Y. So I'm going to add another Y onto this one. So I'm going to put that little Y right here. And I could really even put another one off of that one too and get really crazy. So I'm just going to keep on adding Ys until I'm happy with it. And that's what I want you to do. So now I've added all the Ys that I want to be on my tree. So I am actually done using my paintbrush now so I can set that off to the side with my black paint. And now we are going to start adding some cherry blossoms. So we are going to take our Q-tip, just take one end of it, and same with the paintbrush, we're only going to use the tiptoes of this. Even when you're just dipping it into the paint, only dip a little bit of that into the paint. We're going to start only with the red. So we are going to go in, just dip a little bit onto the red color. So just a little bit on the tiptoes, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to just make dots on top of just where my branches are, just where those Y's are. So I'm going to put these wherever I think I'd like to have a blossom. Does that look so pretty? So I'm going to just keep adding those, just keep dotting them on with just a little bit of paint on the tippy toes of my Q-tip. Go all the way around just where my branches are. So go ahead and do that until you are happy with all of your blossoms. Now, something else you can do, because we've learned that these Japanese cherry blossoms only bloom for two weeks in April, right? And then they start to lose all of their beautiful blossoms. So if you want to, you don't have to, you can make your tree as if it's still within that two weeks, it's just bloomed, or if you choose to, which I think I'm going to do that, I'm going to have some of the blossoms down here on the ground, like they've fallen off, it's starting to just lose a few of its blossoms down here, and if you really want to, you can draw some, paint some in that are actively falling down. So I might do just a few that look like they're floating in the air off of my cherry blossom tree. So when we look at this painting, what are you seeing about these blossoms that don't look so much like the ones that we saw in those images earlier? Right, our blossoms are red, right? So we need pink blossoms. That's what color Japanese cherry blossoms are. But how are we going to get pink? Let's take a look at this for a minute and try to find out how we can take our red cherry blossoms and turn them pink, make them look more real. So I know that every color has something called a tint and a shade. So a tint is just mixing whichever color with white, and that would give us a lighter version of our color that we chose. And then a shade would be taking that same color, mixing it with black, and then making a darker version of that color. So down here at this chart, we see the true colors here. So if we were to take green, add white, that's going to give us these shades. That's a lighter version of that green. And if we were to take green and add black, then we get something like this over here. So for example, Let's take our color red, since that's the color that our cherry blossoms are right now, and we want to change that color. So I know that every color of the rainbow has a tint and a shade. So let's try maybe making a shade first. So to make a shade, I have to take my color red and then mix it with black, and then that is going to give me 
a dark red, so a darker version of that color. But that's not really what we want at all. We actually want to get a tint of red because that's what our pink color is going to end up being. So we would take red to make our tint and then mix it with white. And then that's going to give us a lighter version of red or pink. So that's exactly what we're looking for, right? That's the color that we want to make. Okay, so now that we know how to turn all of these beautiful red blossoms into pink blossoms to make them look more like a Japanese cherry blossom tree, we are going to flip our Q-tip over. It's okay, you might get a little bit of red paint on your hand. <clears throat> Once again, I'm just going to use the very tippy toes. You don't need a whole lot. We're going to dip into our white just a little bit. And then we are going to go over top of those red blossoms. And if we just dot it on, maybe swirl it just a little, that's going to turn all of our blossoms pink. See how that's making that pink color, making that tint of red that we learned about? So just do that for all of the little red blossoms that you made and make them all pink. And if you do not want to turn this painting into a scroll, then your Japanese cherry blossom tree is all done. All right, so now that we have our painting done, if you would like to turn this into a scroll, you are going to need this Japanese alphabet. You can either print this out or you can just look at it online. I have a link to it posted. You will need a white piece of paper. This is what we're going to write our name on right here um, in Japanese. This is a one and a half by four and a half inches white piece of paper. And this piece of paper is a red that measures two by five inches. But what would be nice is if you had some construction paper that was red. Um, I did not have that, so I just painted mine with watercolors because I know it dries pretty fast, but it doesn't look as nice if you just paint it as it would if they, you were using construction paper. Um, you are also going to need a black piece of paper. Once again, this would be nice if you had construction paper. Um, I did not, so I just painted it. 8 by 12 inches, black piece of paper. And you will also need some tape and a string of yarn. This string of yarn is about three lengths of my finger. So you don't need a whole lot. We're actually going to loop this around and this is going to be our little piece of string that ties up to our scroll. So you can use your judgment on how long you think that would need to be. So some tape, a pencil, and a glue stick or some glue, um, liquid glue. Or you can really use rolled pieces of tape to do this step. Um, I just feel like this might be a little bit more secure, so I'm going to use a glue stick because I have one. But if you do not, then there are other ways that you can go about doing that. So I'm going to use this Japanese alphabet. It's sort of simple. Um, it's not 100% what the real Japanese alphabet looks like but it's a little bit easier for us to work with. So I am going to write my name. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write my name. My name is Grace. I'm gonna write that up here and I can use that as a reference as I look for those letters in all of these symbols. So my first letter is G. So I'm gonna look for G, that's right here. And this is what that symbol looks like. So when you go to 
draw these symbols. First, count how many letters are in your name. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So I need space for only five letters on here. If you have a name that has maybe eight or nine letters, you might need to make sure that you're spacing those out correctly. Um, just to make sure that you have enough space, or if you don't get to fit your whole name on there, that's okay. Um, you can just use an abbreviated version of your name, but try to leave enough space. So since I only have five, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I might just split this into five little sections. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll just keep my symbols within those, and you can do that as well. So I know that G is my first letter that I'm going to use. So this, I am going to break it down so it doesn't look so complicated. So I'm going to break this down into just little shapes. So I'm actually going to start with this kind of square shape. And I'm just going to draw that down here. It looks kind of like a square with a little curved line right there. And now I'm going to draw this line that just goes up and above the square. I'm going to draw this little dash that is within the square but doesn't touch these lines. It just goes through that middle line that we just drew. Now I'm going to come up and do this little rectangle that doesn't quite touch anything. It just hovers right above it. A little bit of curved line. And then the other side of the rectangle is actually just a huge slash that goes all the way down kind of in line of where this box is, where the bottom of it is. So I'm going to swoosh that down in line right there. So now I need my second letter. So my second letter is R. So let's look for R. That is all the way over here. Here's my R. So once again, I'm going to break this down into simple shapes like I did before. So I'm just going to start with this line on the bottom. So just a line. And then it's got a little bit of a rectangle that comes up off of it. All right, so I've got that rectangle. It's got two lines that don't quite meet the top that come up from the bottom, like little blades of grass. And then it's got two rectangles. It almost looks like a face, like if this is the mouth and these are the eyes. So I'm gonna draw one of my rectangle eyes just above over here and then draw my little line. Comes off of this side. It doesn't quite touch this side. So I'm just gonna draw a little line and then my other rectangle eye doesn't really have a bottom. It just has the three sides and then curves a little. And then it's got two of these little lines here. So I'm gonna draw those in. So there's my R. So now I'm gonna go to my third letter, which is A. And I am going to split this also into simple shapes. So I'm gonna start with this line and then I'm going to draw, this looks kind of like the number three. So I'm going to draw my line and then my number three right there. Then I'm going to draw this shape that looks kind of like a J. So I'm going to draw that right next to it, my little J. And then there's these two lines that come down off of the J, down towards the bottom corners and then one that just goes right above the top line of that J. So there is my A. Now my fourth letter is C. So C is right here. I'm gonna actually start with this little box because that looks pretty easy to draw. I'm gonna draw that a little bit over since I know I need to draw another shape right there. So I've got my little box. And then I'm gonna draw a T, a lowercase T that just curves a little bit. So there is my T, and then it's got just a little swooshy line that goes down here, kind of like that. So there is my C. So now I'm on my last letter, which is E. So that's right here. So I am going to make this, it looks kind of like an uppercase H, but with an extended middle line. So I'm going to start with that. So my uppercase H with an extended middle line. And then below it, there's kind of a T, but with a little swoosh at the end. 
So I am going to draw, whoops, a T. There we go. And then there's a little swoosh. So I'm going to draw that in just like that. So now I have written my name in Japanese, this Japanese alphabet. So now once I have that, I'm going to take my red piece of paper that is two by five inches and I'm going to glue that right on top. So I am going to take my glue. You could take liquid glue, you could do just rolls of tape if you have that available to you. I'm just going to use this glue stick because that's what I have. And I'm going to try to line that up right in the middle. You might get your parent to help you, get an adult to help you out with that. There we go. Now that's glued on. It's pretty well centered so you can see red on all sides. That's what you want. You want to be able to see that red paper on all sides of that. So now we're done with our Japanese alphabet because we've written our name. And now I'm going to grab my black piece of paper. This is going to be our scroll, this black piece of paper. And these are going to decorate our scroll. So you're going to want to place your beautiful Japanese cherry blossom tree somewhere where you can see black paper on all sides. And then you can put your name either on the bottom, you can put it on the top. I think I'm going to put mine on the top. I like the way that looks. So I'm going to just make sure that I can see black on all sides. And then before I glue this down, I'm going to place this and make sure I like where it is. So I see that these lines don't quite line up with this. So you see that this line on the top of my Japanese cherry blossom painting is longer than the line on this red piece of paper that has my name on it. So I'm going to try to line that up where it's sort of centered. There's an equal amount of space on either of those corners. But mostly, as long as you see black on all sides, it's going to look pretty good. So I'm going to, I'm happy with this, so I'm going to glue those down. So I'm going to start with my painting, flip it over, make sure that it's dry before you do this so that you don't mess up your beautiful blossoms on your tree. Just gonna rub glue all over that piece of paper and glue it right down, right where I had it, and press it down. Once again, making sure that this is dry before we do this. I just have some dried paint on my hands still. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same with this. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to rub some glue all over that piece of paper. Make sure it's right side up. And just glue that right where we had it. And you can erase these lines if you had lines spacing out for the symbols of your name or you don't have to. So now our scroll is almost done. We just have one more thing to add. So I'm going to put the cap back on my glue so it doesn't dry out. Set that to the side. And now what I need is that piece of string or yarn and my tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the top of my scroll is still facing up away from me. I'm just going to flip over my paper like this and now I'm going to attach my string. So when you attach it, you're going to want to make an upside down U shape. So kind of like a lowercase n but without the little stick right here. So make sure that you have a couple of strings that overlap. Try to keep it pretty evenly spaced. So. This goes about to my knuckle, to my fingertip, and I want to do the same on this side. So that's pretty close to my fingertip, to my knuckle, from the edge of the paper to the string. So now that I've got a little bit overlapping, probably another fingertip to knuckle measurement there, 
I'm going to take a piece of tape and then I'm just going to place it right over top of my piece of string and secure it down. And I'm going to do the same thing to this side. So take a little piece of tape, place it right over top of my string, press it down. And now if we hold this and flip this over, now we have our Japanese cherry blossom scroll with our name on it. And we can actually hang this on the wall if you want and use it kind of like how they do in Japan with their beautiful Japanese cherry blossom scrolls or scrolls that have messages or other images on them. So thanks so much for watching you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed making this. If you do make this, please send me your pictures of your artwork. I would love to see it. Um, I will leave a link in the description below where you guys can send those. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.